Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel of Conscious History, where we will unveil the hidden truths of the past. When we talk about one of the most badass looking warriors, who carved his name in the annals of history, we are referring to the Dragon of Albania. A man gifted with numerous statues, he possesses an unbreakable spirit and stands as a true warrior in the pages of history. The Albanian eagles proudly represent his heritage. His muscular physique reflects a life of hard work and dedication. Wearing a helmet with a fearless looking goat and wielding a sword that is used delivering devastating blows to his enemies. We are talking about Albania's pride, scandal bag. In this video, we will show you that through hard work and dedication, it was possible for his name to reach among the greatest warriors of all time. Like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content and let's dive deep into the fire, into the home of the Dragon of Albania. Scandalbag, born Jacques Castriotti, entered the world in 1405 in Sina, Albania. His family hailed from a noble lineage and he was born during challenging times. Albania found itself under the relentless pressure of one of the most formidable and advanced military empires in history, the Ottomans. When Scandalbag's father faced defeat, all tradition demanded that the sons of rulers were captured and groomed as Ottoman Janissary warriors. This procedure was aimed to establish control over conquered territories and ultimately to generate a formidable force of skilled Ottoman warriors. Scandal Bag was forced to undergo training at the Ottoman court under the leadership of Sultan Murad II. However, instead of challenging or breaking him, the brutal Janissary training that young Scandalbag endured only complemented what was already in his soul, a mind made for war. He became incredibly muscular and his physique reminded people of a giant, seemingly indestructible. Throughout his training, his legendary strength enabled him to cleave a man or animal in two with a single sword swing. Jealous of Scandalbag's growing reputation at the Ottoman court, a Tartar challenged him to a duel. The Albanian stripped his waist and warned his opponent to respect the rules of honor. The Ottoman audience was impressed with his manly perfection. During their match, Scandalbag struck off his opponent's head with a single sword swing and held aloft the severe trophy before Murad, thereby winning the Sultan's favor. Not only was Scandalbag physically strong, but he was also highly intelligent and possessed a remarkable talent for diplomacy and strategy. Due to these qualities, he earned promotions first to the rank of cavalry officer and later to governor. His exceptional success on the battlefield led Sultan Murat II to give him a new name, Iskandar Bey, meaning Lord Alexander. In Albanian, this name would be pronounced Iskandar Bey. His military genius earned him a nickname derived from one of the greatest figures of all time, Alexander the Great. This nickname truly highlighted Scandalbag's greatness. Scandalbag had become an extraordinary military leader. However, in 1443, upon learning about the conditions his Albanian people were enduring, he made a choice that would alter his destiny. Scandalbag departed from the Battle of Nice and went to the Albanian city of Kruja with 300 Albanian men who had sworn loyalty to him, establishing the city's castle as his headquarters. There, Scandalbag raised the Castriotti, the Albanian flag featuring the double-headed eagle above the castle, symbolizing their pursuit of freedom and independence. 
Due to Scandalback's charisma and persuasive leadership, he garnered the support of both the Albanian nobility and the common people. He fostered a sense of national pride and identity, igniting a fire in the hearts of many. This led to the unification of Albanian princes, forming the League of Leisure. In 1444, when he would fight collectively for the common good of Albania. And so it began. Scandalbag would fight for Albania's pride to showcase that he was one of the greatest military leaders of all time. In 1444, Scandalbag personally commanded his army to overcome numerical disadvantage. He organized a mobile defense army that used hit and run tactics, forcing the Ottomans to dispurge their troops. Scandalbag fought a guerrilla war, utilizing the familiar mountainous terrain and local support to his advantage. On the fields of Torviol, he had 15,000 men against 30,000 Ottomans. After pinning down their army, he employed hidden cavalry and charged with his own white horse, attacking the Ottoman army from behind. Scandalbag's first victory echoed across Europe because it was one of the first times the powerful Ottoman army was defeated on European soil. Scandalbag knew the land and used the natural advantages of the woods and the mountains to beat the Ottoman armies. This resulted in several victories including the Battle of Mokra in 1445 and the Battle of Atunid in 1446. Fueled with anger, Murat II laid siege to the city of Kriya in 1450. Scandalbag personally commanded his 20,000 men against 80,000 Ottomans. In the defense of the castle, he ordered his forces to spread out and attack the Ottoman supply caravans with hit and run guerrilla tactics. Deprived of ammunition, reinforcements and food, Murad called off the attack. When he returned with another force later, Scandalbag was prepared. He had his men hidden in trees, leading the Ottoman army into a trap and then ambushing them. Eventually, annihilating the invading army and capturing their supply train. With this victory, Scandalbag demonstrated that the Ottomans were not invincible. When Sultan Murad died, his son, Mehmet the Conqueror, provided some relief to the Albanians. This was because Mehmet wanted to conquer Constantinople and didn't want his army to be weakened by dealing with Scandalbag. In 1453, Mehmet conquered Constantinople, and during this time, Scandalbag used the opportunity to rebuild and strengthen his defenses for the wars that were about to come. Once Constantinople was conquered, attention could be turned to Albania. Scandalbag again demonstrated his strategic mastermind and tactics in warfare leading to victories in the Battle of El Bulena in 1457 and the Battle of Ohrid in 1464. His successes made Scandalbag's name and fame widespread. He became known as a legend, single-handedly slaying 3,000 of his enemies in battle. In terms of warfare, Scandalbag seemed undefeatable. In 1466, the second siege of Kriya took place. Sultan Mehmet II led an army into Albania to defeat Scandalbag. During the almost year-long siege, Scandalbag's main fortress Kriya withstood the siege while Scandalbag roamed Albania to gather forces, which would eventually lead to the Albanians holding Kriya and the Ottomans beginning another campaign for another siege on Kriya. The third siege of Kriya took place in 1467, and while the Ottomans did manage to plunder areas around Kriya, 
because of Scandalback's military tactics, Gria was again not conquered by the Ottomans, and Scandalback emerged victorious in the defense of the fortress. In 1468, Scandalback reassembled the League of Leisure to discuss his plans for the future. In eras when warriors ascend to an unprecedented height of greatness, it often appears that no conventional weapons can threaten their existence. Neither sword nor spear can lay a finger on them, but rather it is the silent and relentless grip of sickness. Similar to Alexander the Great, who met his end due to illness, Scandalback too found himself in the grasp of an unseen opponent. Rumors suggest that Malaria, with its stealthy approach, infiltrated the dragon's cave. In 1468, at the age of 62, Scandalback fell to his illness, heading to a warrior's heaven surrounded by the greatest of all time. After his passing, Kruja was besieged for a fourth time in 1478, and without the greatness of Scandalback, the fortress fell. However, what did not fall was the hope and dreams that one warrior ignited among his people. When Scandalback raised his family flag, displaying the black, double-headed eagle, he not only marked the physical act, but more significantly, he raised the collective spirit of his people. This gesture represented more than his lineage. It became a symbolic elevation, forging a renewed sense of national pride and identity among his people. His flag didn't just herald the clash of arms, it became a beacon of hope in the darkest moments. Through it, Scandalback showcased that triumph is possible even when the odds are against you. The flag became a symbol of resilience, fueling the inner strength of his people, or as he would have said himself, it wasn't me who brought you freedom, I found it here, among you. In Albania's declaration of independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1912, the Albanians chose to adopt his banner, the Castriotti family coat of arms, as their national flag, showcasing that with freedom and hope, the eagles always find their way home. Did you know of Scandalback, one of the greatest warriors of all time? What did you think of his aesthetic, his goat helmet and sword, or the fact that after his passing, his white horse was forbidden to be ridden by someone else? Leave me your answers below in the comments. And if you like the content, like and subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to see more in-depth history videos. We love making these videos. See you next time at Conscious History.